What's going on everyone? Thanks for joining me today. This is Spagaver Backpacking. I'm Mark and today we are going to be building another stove. Another alcohol stove. So this one is another version of the Spagaver stove. This is one that one of my viewers said, hey, try this out. I did and I really like what I came up with or what he came up with. And so I wanted to show you guys exactly what we're doing here. So let's turn this little Starbucks can into a pretty killer little Spagaver stove. Super well performing, way more uh, durable than, than ones in the past, and it has the ability to burn without the pot on there, without deteriorating it the way that the original one did, which was one of the big issues I had with it. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your supplies. So a ruler and a Sharpie are, are pretty key. Uh, a knife, some sort of razor blade, something really sharp that you can use, and a pair of scissors. Now, you can go about how you do the height and, and make that up as you go. I'm gonna go with a base that's an inch and then about one and, uh, one and three quarters for the insert because it'll be sticking up just a little bit from the bottom because of the ridge in the bottom of the can. So we'll go with one and three quarters and that should put me somewhere close to that one inch ballpark. Not quite there, but I found that a little bit short doesn't hurt anything. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go super simple and I'm just gonna go put my Sharpie right at that one inch and just hold it there. Then just spin my can. And now I've got a nice line where that one is. I'll go to one and three quarters. Turn it upside down because it's the top of it that I'm using. Spin this. Okay. So now I've got my two cut lines on there. But before we cut those, what we want to do is we actually want to take this top piece out. And that's where this sharp one comes in. So you're gonna be really, really careful doing this because this is nice, thin aluminum. If you were to push too hard and push through here, you really have a chance of cutting yourself badly. So just start with scoring this top. And just go right around in that, that lip. So there's that recessed area. Just take your blade and just go around through there. And once you've got a nice groove created, you can push a little bit harder. So I'm just gonna keep doing this for a couple of minutes, make sure that I've got a nice groove in there, make sure that I'm not pushing so hard that it goes through and could cut me because I'm in a, a spot here where, you know, you mess up, you could be getting stitches. Okay, so once you've scored it around enough that you're actually starting to have your blade go through, then it's time to grab one piece I didn't say before was either needle nodes or like duckbill pliers like these and kind of reached in and just start kind of wearing it down you know do a little back and forth action and it should start to crack right along where you scored it you can see it's starting to crack and peel away right along where I scored it so it just takes a little bit of time of moving it bending it using the fatigue and that stress spot where you just kind of uh, did that and if you've done it if you scored it pretty well it doesn't take a whole lot before that entire top comes out pretty much in one piece and you're left with that now you can use the back side of this and just kind of go through here smooth this back so that there's not this ridge that's sticking out and being sharp. So I'll do that. I'll just kind of roll it in a little bit. All right, and that's what you're, you're left with there. And you can still see I've got some residue down in the bottom of the can. We'll clean that out. Um, not a big deal. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts. So you can either use the razor blade that you had before or a knife just to make the rough cut. I get it far enough around, I can then use my shears and just kind of snip it. Now you've got your two pieces and you need to clean these up by cutting right along those edges. So just follow your line and it'll be nice and easy, nice clean cut. All right, so there's the, the base. Now for the top, just do exactly the same thing. Super easy. You can use just household scissors. Will work, no problem. Now to make those uh, burn channels, the creases, it's a little bit different because you've got that top on there. So I'm gonna mark every quarter inch. I'm gonna put a mark and we're gonna use this straight edge right here as my first mark, and then we're just gonna wing it as we go around. So let me go ahead and mark all these, and then we'll come back and take a look what I'm doing. Actually, I'm gonna go half inch, not quarter inch. So we'll use that line as the first one, rotate it around, quarter inch, quarter inch, or half inch, sorry. Yeah. Okay, and if you do it at half inch intervals, it works out that uh, this line, you get exactly the right number and it's exactly spaced and you don't have to worry about it. Or at least that's what I came up with. So now that we've got them all marked, we're gonna use that straight line as the starting point. And I'm gonna take, I've got this little metal ruler and it's got a, a cork back, but one edge, it's offset from it. And so I'm gonna take that and just kind of set it right on that line and just kind of push down and use my fingers behind it to kind of create the crease. So there's the first crease that you've got. I'm just gonna go around and do this on all of them and try and keep it straight up and down or as close as possible as I'm doing it. And what you'll find is when you're done, you'll probably have to go back through and rebend a couple of them because your fingers being in here have straightened them out or whatever. Uh, and they don't have to be, they don't have to be absolutely perfect. I mean, I can sit here and talk with you guys, go around and do this, and uh, have something that is good enough to work, for sure. But this is what we're aiming to do, just kind of go around, crease them, and you can see they're not very deep right now, and so I can go back through and really work on that, uh, and I'll show you what I come up with. Okay, so I cleaned this out. Pretty much, I mean, there's still some stuff in there. So now the hard part is getting this in there, which as long as you've done it, okay, isn't that hard. And that's what you end up with. So because it still has that rim along the top, this lightweight aluminum isn't exposed to the heat that's coming out from the flames and so it doesn't deteriorate. And it also, so this thing is about seven grams and is super, super, Strong. That extra ring, that ring adds so much additional strength to it. And you know, you set that pot on there, it's really nice. Um, now you can see all the the creases create those jets where the flames come out. So why don't we go light this thing and see uh, how well it performs? Okay, this will be the first burn with this one. I've got yellow bottle heat in there, and I've got a Tokes 550 with some water in it. So let's go ahead and fire this up. And it should bloom very quickly. There's the bloom. Set this on top. Now it's gonna burn yellow this first time just because it was not completely clean in there. Let's get a good look at that burn pattern. You see those flames are coming out and just barely up the sides of that 550. 
but it's a nice even flame pattern all the way around. The jets work perfect. No need for any relief hole or anything up in the top. So there you have it. That is a a different way to do the Spagaver stove, still using that smaller can. So you end up with a nice lightweight 7, 7.1 gram package here. It's more durable, it'll last longer. You don't have to worry about leaving a pot on here the whole time because it won't deteriorate the way that the others do. Uh, you can play with the sizes. You can make the reservoir a little bit bigger by going more than an inch on the bottom. You go inch and a quarter, inch and a half, whatever you need. Uh, I like this small little compact size. Half ounce will boil two cups of water most times, depending on which pot you're using. Uh, you can see we used this one and now it's a little bit dirty because I didn't clean out the inside as well as I could or should have. Um, but it gives a character. Let's call it that, character. All right, guys. If you have any other suggestions, this came from a viewer. This was a suggestion of a viewer and super, super cool idea. Definitely improves this design without sacrificing weight and uh, gives you that compact, good performing stove that you don't have to worry so much about. So awesome, awesome idea. Thank you on this one. If you guys have any other comments, any other ideas, leave them down below. I'd like to hear them and maybe we'll do another stove. Just do it up with uh, your ideas. So appreciate it. I'll see you guys down the trail.